Driving a car on electricity. Increasing numbers of motorists are switching. The technology is transforming from a niche area to a mainstream sector. During the past year alone, the numbers of new car registrations for electric and plug-in hybrid cars in Europe has doubled to around 56,000. For the current year, experts are reckoning with similar growth rates. One explanation? The EU member countries decided in March that new vehicles from 2020 onwards should not emit more than 95 grams per kilometre of the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. The manufacturers are having to move fast in order to reduce the total CO2 emissions of their fleets. The, classischen... the classical fossil fuels and present combustion engines are facing extinction. At some stage there won't be sufficient fossil energy or it will be too expensive. Many experts see in the medium term plug-in hybrids, cars with electric and combustion engines, as an intelligent solution. They enable motorists to undertake both short and long distance trips. Slowly this combination is being seen by experts, environmentalists and manufacturers as the best interim solution. I think that with the plug-in hybrid we can join two major advantages into one. On the one hand, we can drive emission-free locally, particularly in urban areas where that will be necessary in future. And on the other hand, we will have no distance restrictions. To combine both in one vehicle, I feel, is the correct answer to the need in future of both features for longer distances. Even the most successful European car of all times, the Golf, is now available for purchase as a plug-in hybrid model. Combustion and electric engine combined provide an output of 204 horsepower, providing the Golf GTE acceleration of 0 to 100 km an hour in just 7.6 seconds. The car can travel up to 50 km purely electronically and its overall range lies at around 940 km. All that is possible with an average fuel consumption of just one and a half litres of petrol per 100 kilometres. Other manufacturers are also reckoning firmly with the future technology. This BMW i8 has been completely reconstructed. Not just the engine, but also the design, as well as the especially light passenger cabin made from carbon. The low-profile car can produce more than 300 horsepower. Porsche is the first manufacturer of luxury class cars to place a plug-in hybrid on the market. The Panamera needs just 5.5 seconds to reach a speed of 100 km an hour and has a top speed of 270 km an hour. In addition, the car is extremely economic on fuel, needing only 3.1 litres per 100 km. Even in the top range of cars, the manufacturers are placing emphasis on additional electric power. This Mercedes S500 plug-in hybrid has probably the lowest fuel consumption for a luxury car in the world. At 2.8 litres average for 100 kilometres and a CO2 emission of 65 grams per kilometre, this flagship car performs better than most small vehicles. When the battery is fully charged, the electrical energy suffices for 33 kilometres. If we were to look five years ahead, we would see a very high proportion of hybrid vehicles because the greatest waste of energy taking place at present on the roads comes from braking and moving off. It's dissipated in hot brake cylinders and warmer tyres, but it can be wonderfully recuperated using an electric engine working as a generator. And this is the key factor in saving lots of energy. But just how does this technology function? The hybrid combines two forms of propulsion and their respective advantages, combustion and electric engines. The latter are more economical when moving off and during stop and go in town because they use no petrol. Naturally, the electric engine requires electricity which it gets from its battery. During braking, the electric engine functions like a generator and creates electricity which charges the battery. This is called recuperation and serves to make the hybrid extremely economical on fuel, particularly in towns and in traffic jams. Some hybrids are plug-ins because they have a connection point for charging from the grid. Europe's largest manufacturer of cars, Volkswagen, is really accelerating when it comes to electromobility. The Passat GTE2 is yet another plug-in hybrid to have come onto the market. The future of Volkswagen will certainly continue to be diesel vehicles, auto combustion engines, but also plug-in hybrids as well as electric vehicles. 
and the European target of achieving an emission limit of 95 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer by 2020 will only be possible if we succeed in persuading our customers to purchase electrically powered vehicles. And this too is a plug-in hybrid, a Lamborghini with 910 horsepower. This prototype vehicle has combined combustion and electric engines. It accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour in 3 seconds and reaches a top speed of 320 km per hour. Its consumption is said to be around that of a small car. Lamborghini calculated it at 4.1 litres per 100 km. However, the price will no doubt be somewhat higher than that of an average small car. The proportion of electric and hybrid cars in Europe is now around 0.5%. But experts reckon that this figure will, in the coming 10 years, increase to around 8%. And the manufacturers too are intent on doing their homework in matters of hybrid. They're placing constantly improved plug-in models on the roads. That means more choice of models, greater distance range and less fuel consumption. Tu opinión nos interesa. Si tienes algo que decirnos, envíanos un mail. Esperamos tus sugerencias.